Welcome back, everybody, to the uh, Truth and Light podcast, where we are revealing the truth of God through the light of Scripture. I am your host, Pastor B. And I'm Ariel with blue hair. That is a blue-haired Ariel. You do not have to adjust your screens or your monitors. That is Ariel with blue hair. You are correct. <laughs> All right, so it's good to see you guys. We are back after another brief hiatus. It has been crazy busy around here. We love fall. We love it. But yeah, it's there's a lot happening, but it's good. Everything's good. God is good. Um, we're having a great time. We hope you're having a great fall as well. Um, and we hope that all of our children of God out there are just continuing in that walk with their father. That's right. That's right. And so one of the important things that we're doing here in revealing God through the light of Scripture and, and that truth of God through the light of Scripture, it's so important uh, for you to understand that what we're doing here is helping you understand where God stands on things. And mm -hmm. especially with an election year like this coming up, where things are uh, the utmost importance of who we're voting for and what we're voting for and where God stands on a lot of subjects, you know, one of the, one of the things that this world will tell you is that we are kind of the universalist um, people under God. You know, all people are children of God. So that's kind of our question today, though. Did God really say that everyone is a child of God? Well, God said he loves the world, right? And God created us. So doesn't that mean we're all children of God? Hmm. That's a very interesting thing. And that's an interesting subject that we want to bring up today uh, in this podcast because it has been... Um, something in the past that people have said to me. Uh, it is something that people have brought up from different aspects and different avenues of things. Uh, so the argument is that we are all children of God. We all have a right to call him God. We all worship the same God. We just worship him in different ways. I don't think I have uh, not heard that argument at least a hundred times. Yeah, for sure. Minimum, yeah. minimum a hundred times. We're all worshiping the same God. We're just doing it in a different way. So we're all children of God because God created all things. And because he created us, doesn't that make us children? I mean, I don't know about you. I have been blessed enough to have my biological father in my life. He's the one who I call dad. But I know several people who's whose biological father isn't in their life, and that's not the person they call dad. So I think, um, as we'll get into, I think that's almost something we can compare with God. Yeah, absolutely. And so first things is, is I kind of want to show you a video, and this is a, a, a clip of, a, of a, a TikTok that somebody was putting out there, or a, a, a YouTube clip, uh, whatever you want to call it. That's why I watch them on. <laughs> I watch YouTube shorts. Um, this was one of the not-so-short YouTube shorts. It was part of an overall podcast, but this was somebody that was coming out and expressing this very idea. And I'm going to share this video, guy, a video with you guys real quick. I believe, and maybe I just believe differently, so maybe y'all need to hear what I believe. I believe everybody's a child of God, period. If you got breath in your body, you are a child of God. Atheist, transgender, homosexual, heterosexual, thief, murderer, churchgoer, bishop, Everybody is a child of God. Everybody, the earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Everybody belongs to God. If you don't believe in Christ, you're lost. That don't mean you're not his, y'all. You know, anybody you ever meet, a golf person, a transgender, I don't, anybody you meet, they belong to God. That's God's child. Whether they're wayward, whether they're whatever. Whether, now, if they don't believe in Christ, they uh, 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 they they are lost and not have and have not found their way. I so that's kind of where a lot of people pick up. Everybody's a child of God. Doesn't matter where they are. Now, to his benefit, he does distinguish between the lost and those who are under Christ, mm -hmm. but that they are all children of God. But one of the things that he said in his argument, as he's making this argument, is that God created everyone. We all belong to Him. Um, this, this is a great sentiment. I mean, we really want to believe things like this. We truly want to believe that, you know, everybody's a child of God and everybody loves Jesus. And, 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 you know, we just do it our own ways. And it, 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 you know, in our hearts, I can see where somebody comes up with an argument like this because they really don't want to feel negatively about people. And they think to exclude people 
from a group or a category means that we think less of them, we love less of them, uh, or that somehow they're lesser than the rest of us. And that that's, uh, you know, again, is, is this a good argument to make? Does it add up with what the Bible says? Or is this guy just espousing, as, as you saw, he was just espousing something from his feelings um, and, and didn't have any uh, traction or any foundation in the scripture. And that's a big problem mm -hmm. because when we start to make an argument that's not scripturally based, when we base it on our own thoughts and our own ideals because it makes us feel good about people, are we making a truly good argument? Yes, we all do belong to God. Absolutely. He created us and we belong to him. But just because you belong to him, does that make you a child of God? And that's the real question. Is everyone a child of God? Um, and while he will not make a biblical argument, Ariel, I think it's up to us to make a biblical argument to see if what he says lines up with what God says. So, uh, the first place I'd like to take us uh, is over to 1 John 3, 1. I think you had that marked mm -hmm. as well. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, uh, beginning in verse 1. And it's so important we read this through um, because if we don't understand it in context, we won't understand. So here we go, beginning in verse 1. See how great a, f a love the Father has bestowed upon us that we would be called children of God. Okay. So he is saying that people are children of God mm -hmm. and such we are. For this reason, the world does not know us because it does not know him. So automatically in the very next sentence here, we see Paul, or excuse me, we see John in this writing make an utter distinction between the world and and whoever he is writing to, because he says us yeah. in this scripture. So he's writing to somebody. So who is he writing to, Ariel? Do we know who John is writing to? Yeah, he's writing to the church. How he's do writing we know to that? Christians. Well, what? I don't know. And hold on. In the context of First John, I don't have that off the top of my head. Oh, man. I thought you were going to be there for I me. was not there. I thought there. you were going to be there for me. I was not me. there for you. Oh, <laughs> Uh, here you go. Verse 3. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him, meaning Jesus, purifies himself just as he is pure. So it's those who have their hope fixed on Jesus. Yeah. So those who accepted Jesus, accepted his gift of forgiveness in the video, what the guy calls the those that are saved or those that are in Christ. And so we know here now who he is talking to. Second of all, we see it here in when it says beloved. So he's speaking to people in whom he has a relational connection mm -hmm. with. That would be the people of the church. And then he goes on to say, we are children of God and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him just as he is. All right. And then again, we make the modifier in verse 4. Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. So again, that distinction between those who are in sin and those who are in Christ Jesus who are without sin, we see the other definition of who the children of God are. Now, we could make this a really short podcast and say, done. The Bible says only people in Christ Jesus are children of God. But maybe some people might make another argument. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I think it's important. I think this stuff is important because, you know, in that video that you showed us, you know, he was talking about how we're all children of God. I think a lot of Christians nowadays, we really try to be, we try to be inclusive of all because it makes us seem nicer. Um, and I think because we all with the kindness in our hearts. We all want to see people come to Christ. And that was what was so interesting that stood out to me in that video. And he said, you know, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're lost. Mm -hmm. And he's absolutely right. But then on the other side of the coin says, we're all children of God. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, he's connecting two things that aren't actually connected. Yeah. Um, th there is absolutely an exclusionary aspect, 
You know, you're either in Christ or you're not. Yeah. Yeah. And so I kind of, I don't know if I gave you this one. I was looking at um, 2 Corinthians in chapter 6. Okay, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Starting in 14. Starting so, in verse 14. Let's, let's go there. And then let's, 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 let's whirl it up here on the, old Bible, on the old Bible viewer here. So I think it's important when we're reading in the scripture is like, and we're seeing you know, these distinctions being made between the world and those in mm. Christ, there's a reason for that because we're separate. Um, and I think, you know, being created by God and being a child of God is absolutely a very clear distinction that is made in the scripture. So right here in 14, this is talking about not being yoked together. It says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what fellow or what fellowship can light have with darkness what harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? Okay, and then even down in, skimming to 18, right? He says, I will be a father to you and you will be a, my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty, right? So right here he's saying, you know, what does the light have to do with the darkness? What does the temple of God have to do with idols? He's separating us from the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so if we are all children of God, then none of us are separate from one another. We're all together. Mm -hmm. And God says, no, you as my children, you who have come under my grace are, are separated. I have separated you from the world. I mean, for your benefit, for the better. Yes. Um, and, and, and so what's important about this is that this is... Uh, and I was just looking that up here in, in the Greek. That's a future uh, in, in, in indicative uh, verb, I will be, which means only when we qualify. Mm -hmm. So it's a future tense. And, and so uh, you go up to the context, and I will dwell with them, and I will walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out of the midst and be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you, and I will be your, and I will be a father to you. So if you do these things, then I will be a father to you. This is an if-then statement in the Greek. It's an argumentation that says, if you act a certain way, then I will act a certain way. And, and that is an important distinction to make because it does separate us from the world. Not everybody gets to be a child of God. And you know what? Is that exclusive language? Is that excluding people uh, from a category? It absolutely does. And then, of course, what is the immediate uh, response to that that you usually get? Oh, well, that, that doesn't seem fair. Like, how, how could a loving God just exclude people? That's right. If, if God really loved people, then, then how is he excluding people? You know, a loving God wouldn't exclude people uh, from, from going to heaven because he loves them. The question is, is this. If God is loving, it means that God is just. Because God must do what is in right and in righteousness for everyone. And and we this guy says if you're a murderer, if you're homosexual, if you're bisexual, if you're trans, if you are a thief, if you are, you know, if you're a lot of these things, then you're a child of God. If you're all these sinful things, then you're a child of God. Well, what what the problem is with that is, is that makes God not a just God. Mm -hmm. Because a just God will punish wickedness and sin. Yeah. Now, what is, what is the difference then between people who are children of God and who aren't children of God? Well, it's the punishment aspect, right? God created all human beings. He is our creator. We do belong to him. But he is not a father to all. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm jumping ahead here because I need to go back and I need to list some more qualifiers because Romans 8 has some more qualifiers. Yeah. And I think we need to we, we need to hit these qualifiers. And then I'm going to finish up my thought on, on fathers and what that is and, and what, those, what the final qualifier is within that. But just because somebody has created something doesn't make them a parent of something. And, and we know that all too well. So... But 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 let's go back. Let me let me let me rewind because I need to go to Romans uh, chapter eight, and and I'm going to pick up in verse fourteen here, uh, and this is a very important aspect of who we are too, because it says this in, in verse fourteen for all who are being led by the Spirit of God or what we would call 
the Holy Spirit, right? These are the sons of God, or, or we could say these are the persons of God. Mm -hmm. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy, Father. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the familiar and Father. So Dad, Father. The Spirit himself testifies to our spirits that we are children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. So here we are. Two, two qualifiers right inside of here. Number one, you got to be led by the Spirit of God, which means you must possess the Holy the Spirit. Spirit of God. And, and, and so I'm going to ask you this, Eric, because this, this should be the softball. The softball. Okay. okay, my notes were different than yours, and I was okay. looking here. But, but I know, but, I, but this is softball. I'm just I'm leading you into it because I'm trying to help. softball. Okay, so who is it then who possesses the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Christians, followers of Christ. Okay, who okay. have been baptized. Okay, and, and where do we where do we get that from? What? What, what scripture do we get that from? Do you remember? Um, Acts something. I don't remember the exact. 2.38. Yeah. <laughs> Acts 2.38, right? Because in, in Acts 2, there's a, what should we do? And then Peter says, repent therefore. And be baptized. There yep. you go. In the name of the Father, Father Son, and Holy Son, Spirit. Holy Spirit. I know it. Go. I just couldn't remember the exact. That, that's all right. You were there. You were in Acts. That's a good place to start. And it's not even that far in. So you'd have been in there real quick. <laughs> um, Acts 2.38 tells us that very thing. And you should, you, you, and you, you should be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then you may receive the forgiveness for your sins. And that you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is in the imparting at baptism when we accept uh, the gift of salvation. We seal that in our physical obedience uh, of baptism, of water baptism. And then we receive that gift of the Holy Spirit upon us at that time. Now, granted, there are exceptions throughout Acts, but remember those are exceptions to the rule and not the rule itself. Mm -hmm. So we see that it are those that have accepted Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, at their time of salvation through baptism, uh, through that physical obedience, giving themselves fully to God, they receive that gift of the Holy Spirit. So it's only then are we marked as children of God. Yeah, and, and that's important because, so in 2 Corinthians, what we read when it says the temple of God, right? It's talking about you. Like your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit, you know, when you put your faith in Christ and when you take that step of baptism. Mm -hmm. And I mean, ex I mean, having the gift of the Holy Spirit, that absolutely should separate you from other people. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be the same as the world. That's, that's right. why that's why I follow Jesus because I wanted to be taken out of the world and put under his grace. And so while I think the sentiment is is nice and we're trying to be nice to people and you know show them like oh how great it is and get them to come to church and accept Jesus um I think we we need to do that through truth. And yes. so it it's important to tell people where they stand before God because if if the truth was, oh, we're all children of God, then truly we would all be universalists and th there would be no need for the gospel. That's right. And, and hell would be awful empty. Yeah. You know, but, but, the, but again, the case is this, that God is just, and not only that, God's not a liar. Yeah. And when God wrote the law back, way back with Moses uh, on Mount Sinai, when he wrote the law, the rule of the law is if you were to break any of the least of these commandments, you break them all. Mm -hmm. And so therefore you're made guilty and guilty of sin, sin punishable by death, uh, death in the flesh. It's the same punishment that he, that he proclaimed to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden when he said, if you shall eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die for you have separated yourself from me. Yeah. And I am life. It's not like God comes down and says, oh, you did something bad. I'm you. <laughs> it's the required punishment of a just and loving God that if yeah. you are separated from life, which is him, then that must lead to death. And he cannot be a liar. He cannot be a liar. And he cannot contradict himself. Yeah. 
So there are qualifications to be called uh, sons and daughters of God, to be called children of God. Not everybody, and I know this goes against popular uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, ideologies, but you, not everybody's going to get into heaven. Not everybody accepts Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Uh, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, not a way, a truth, and a life. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why Jesus uses the definitive He's making it abundantly clear that there is only one way to life. And see, folks, that, that, that's what you really must understand. That when he says we are children of God or we are sons and daughters of God or we are sons of God, he is saying we are sons of life. Yeah. That's the key. God is life. God is the only place where life is. And if we separate ourselves from that, then we are children of darkness. Mm-hmm. Period. Dot. I mean, there's only, there's no gray areas. There's no mediums. There's no place in the middle. Obviously, there are always exceptions. God calls them out. If, if what if nobody, somebody never heard of Jesus Christ, you know, and doesn't know the gospel. Well, well, that's great. You know, God has an, God has uh, uh, exemptions for people who've never heard of Jesus. The problem is, is if you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> then you now have heard of Jesus Christ and you have been given the gospel already through this walkthrough because we've talked about salvation. We've talked about baptism. We've talked about Jesus and how he paid for our sins upon the cross. We've talked about how uh, the only way in into life is to accept Jesus and his forgiveness. Therefore, because Jesus, the true son of God, who lived that perfect life on this earth, took and paid that penalty. He took the guilt away so that we would be called sons and daughters once again of God. Yeah, and that was something that Jesus was trying to get into, was trying to get to the Pharisees, was trying to get to the people of his time, you know, when he was walking on the earth. Um, The main problem that they were having was, oh, like, we're the Jews. We're the descendants of Abraham. So we're good. <laughs> that's right. Um, but that's not the case. And so when we, you know, when we read out of Romans three twenty three that says, "For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God," that means all, including the Jews, you know, the Jews and the Gentiles, mm-hmm. all people. Um, and that that was hard because Jesus was almost doing kind of like what we're telling you that we are, that you know, that we're not all in the same boat. You know, there are children of God and there are not children of God. And he was almost putting the Jews, he was kind of in their mind, like pushing them back into that not children of God, even though that's where they started. We all start there. I don't know. It's it's a weird situation. So I don't know if you wanted to go to John 8 or if you had something else first. I can can get you to John 8. Let's, Let's go to John 8. I think this passage kind of perfectly demonstrates what we're telling you. What we had on John 8. Uh, Starting in... I have starting in 31. It's kind of a longer passage. That's all right. Let's go. So this is John 8, starting in 31. This is Jesus talking to, it says the Jews who had believed in him. So (laughs) Um, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you that I have seen what I have seen in the father's presence and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. And they say, we are not illegitimate children. They protested, the only father we have is God himself. And he eventually says, no, you're a a child of the devil because you don't accept me and I'm from the father. So he's trying to explain to them, like, okay, just because you are physical descendants of Abraham doesn't make you a child of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you, you know, because all who sin are slaves to sin. Mm -hmm. And so the people here, they're really, they're arguing about genealogy. But what he's saying is, like, children of the devil love evil and they love sin. 
you guys love evil and you're rejecting the truth and you love your sin, put two and two together, what happens here? (laughs) Um, And so he's trying to get across to them, I, right here, I am the word of God and you are not accepting me. So you are not a child of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really important to say that, yeah, there, there's a super important distinction there. Um, he's trying to, he's trying to get these guys to accept him. He's saying like, Hey, you guys, I am here to save you, to be your savior, but you guys, you just want to stay where you are. You don't want to accept anything new. You just want to stay in your little bubble and just think that you're fine, but you're not. That's why I've come to do this. Absolutely, and you bring up a wonderful point because it's going to take us right back to First John chapter three, mm-hmm. and it's important that we understand that if we're not following Christ, then then Satan is our father. We are yeah. because we're serving ourselves, serving evil. We must understand that there are only two sides. There are there is serving Christ and good, and you come under His goodness and His righteousness. He becomes our righteousness when we accept the gift of salvation. And then they're serving the devil. There's evil. There's serving self and self-interest. The funny thing about this is, is it really explains this out well here. Excuse me. In in First John, in chapter uh, three, beginning in verse seven, it says this: "Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he, meaning Jesus, is righteous. And the one who practices sin is of the devil." For the devil has sinned from the beginning, meaning he practices sin. Mm -hmm. And the Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil, right? Which was death and accusation and, and deceit. No one who is born of God practices sin because he's his seed abides in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this, right, this, the children of God... And the children of the devil are obvious. So the no one who is born of God practices sin because mm-hmm. his seed abides in them. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. So basically it's saying this is there are those who are children of God, because they do the things of God. Mm-hmm. This is really where the thing transitions, okay? Because that's the key linchpin in the whole argument. The difference between being a creator and being somebody's father is relationship. That's what's so important to understand that when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we enter into a covenant mm-hmm. with God. And covenants are relational. It means we enter into a relationship, mutually beneficial relationship of love and blood. This is all sealed up. And it's sealed by the blood of Christ on the cross. It was sealed by his resurrection. And then it becomes sealed in each one of us through the Holy Spirit when we accept that gift and we come into baptism. And, and some people might argue with me about the whole baptism thing right because oh you know that's not what it's all about but i want to show you something here <clears throat> because it's also found in galatians 3 verses 26 and 27 it says this for you are all sons of god through faith in christ jesus now that alone that's where people would stop but if you go to verse 27 for all of you who were baptized into christ have clothed yourselves with christ there's that modifier there's that that prerequisite Mm -hmm. then there is neither jew nor greek there's neither slave nor free man there's your male or female for you are all one in christ jesus and if you belong to christ then you are abraham's descendants and heirs according to the promise which by the way if you want to make that uh, argument that the church is israel there it is right there we (laughs) now become abraham's descendants abraham's descendants are all known as israelites that's how we get that argument that the church is Israel um, and is the fulfillment, uh, uh, and not a fulfillment, but it is it is the new covenant. See, the new covenant determines Israel is always established by covenant, mm-hmm. and the and the Israel was established in the covenant of Christ as well as in the old covenant. So it's a new and better and more perfect covenant because it's now in the blood of Christ and not the blood of animals. That's for free. 
You get that one for free, right? Did God really say the church is Israel? Answered, right? He did. He says it right here. But we are all sons because we were baptized into Christ, having clothed ourselves with Christ. Um, I don't want to get into the whole is baptism required for salvation issue because we, we can get into the whole problem and asking the wrong questions. And that's not the question to ask at all. The question at all it is, is if you if God is your Lord, why aren't you baptized? Why aren't you immediately baptized as Philip and the eunuch and all that was handled? In the end, the qualifier here is because we have been baptized into Christ. We are known as heirs with Christ in the uh, promise of God that he has given to us. So again, this qualifier exists. Again, that's how we receive the Holy Spirit anyway, is through that baptism uh, in, in the normal process of salvation. So. I think, but I think what, what's so great about this, um, you know, about these qualifiers and, you know, we are, t we are separate, but the thing is, is you can go from one group to the other Pr pretty, it's simple, mm -hmm. right? Put your faith in Christ and, you know, be baptized because, you know, that's a command that he gives us. Um, you can come into that love, right? It says there's neither Jew nor Greek, no male, nor female, right? The world tries to separate us by all of those things. That's right. Christ sees us all the same. He sees us as his children. And if you, you know, if you aren't in Christ today and you would like to be, you can be. And that's the beauty of it. You don't have to be an enemy of God. And I think we've said that before, but I want to, I, I want everyone to know that, that, you know, right now you are an enemy of God, but you don't have to be. Yeah. If you're not in Christ Jesus, that line's and, and that's the thing is there's these, and, and, and that's why we're hitting it so hard and it feels like we're kind of almost beating a dead horse here. <laughs> it's because the qualification lines are so clear and they're so forthcoming and they're so uh, uh, obvious. As just as he said, it's obvious who are children of God and who are children of the devil. There's this distinctive line that God makes throughout scripture. So yeah, this young man, he was absolutely enthusiastic about his, pro, about his claim inside of this video. The, the problem is, is enthusiasm can never take the place of truth. Mm -hmm. We must know the scripture. This is the only way we are going to prevent being deceived in this world is to know the word of God. Again, it's why this podcast exists, because we want to reveal the truth of God through the light of scripture. Everything we're giving you, it's not our feelings. It's not who or what we think. It's the pure word of God and what it says. And it doesn't just say it once, but it says it over and over and over. I mean, I could go through and give you some more of these, um, it, but, but we don't have the time. I, I could sit here and, and just really pound this in. But it's but it's the key is the understanding is just because you were created by somebody doesn't mean that you have chosen them to be your father, mm -hmm. to be your Lord, to be your guide, because when we choose our fathers like that, you know, our fathers birth us, but there's a lot of people who choose not to let somebody be their dad, yeah. to be their father. You know, maybe they, maybe they weren't a good person. Maybe mm -hmm. they were abused by them or, or maybe, you know, you guys, you know, separated your ways, whatever it is. In the end, when you choose and you say, this is my dad, it's because you have a relationship. You don't want to walk up to a stranger on the street <laughs> and say, that's my dad right there, you know. Because it's not dad or father begs the relationship quality. It means you know one another. Mm -hmm. You know who each other are. And that's the that's another, again, qualifying line in all of this is that we can't just randomly decide that somebody's going to be our dad. We must know them. We must be a part of them. We must know what it means to say, I am a child of God. I am an heir to the promise. Because what in the end is the promise? The promise of eternal life with him. That's it. And that's something that we choose. God doesn't force us to spend eternity with him. You know, I, I think everyone likes the idea of heaven, just like everyone likes the idea that we're all children of God. But heaven, essentially, it's eternity with God. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to spend your life now with him, why would you want to spend the rest of your life with him? Well, it's always great to like the idea of something. Mm -hmm. um, oh gosh, what was I thinking of just the other day? Um, it, was, it was a car that I had bought, and I loved the idea <laughs> of this car that I bought. Um, 
and I can't remember which car it was. It was, it was, well, most of all, it's, and I think every young person goes through this. It was my Volkswagen I bought. I <laughs> love the idea, and not the new one. It was, it was back a long time ago. <laughs> um, it, it was, it was a Volkswagen Fox, if that takes it. Some people will know that, some people won't. Um, <clears throat> it was the idea of the freedom of driving. It was the idea of knowing that I don't have to ask for rides. It was the idea of knowing that I had the, the, the power to drive wherever I wanted to and I could go when I wanted to and I didn't have to wait on anybody's this freedom and this idea. But the reality <laughs> then soon hits and that's that gas costs money. <laughs> and only does gas cost money, repairs cost money. Cars break down. Mm -hmm. People will sell you a bad car and not tell you. You know, and I can walk through, you know, tires cost money and you start to realize that owning a car becomes kind of expensive <laughs> and yeah. there's a responsibility to it. You can't just run around and proclaim that God is your father and not have any responsibility. Sure, you love the idea. We mm -hmm. love the idea of eternal life and, and, and never having to worry about, you know, crying and, and hurting and no more pain and no more tears. The, the problem is, is you're not ascribing to the life that leads to that. Mm -hmm. You like the idea of it, but you don't understand it because you don't know the Father. And so He can't be your Father because there's no relationship there. It is only when you become adopted as children of God, when you accept His uh, offer of adoption, do you truly become child of God? And the way you do that is you know him and you know what he's done for you and you understand the love he has for you and you desire to be in that love of God. If we were all children of God, I would be holding non-believers accountable to what God asks of us. Mm -hmm. And we don't do that. And you, if you're watching, or just anyone who's a non-believer, if a Christian tried to hold them accountable to Christian standards, they'd be pretty upset by that. So you can't, you can't hold people. And I, I don't remember which episode it was. We've talked about this. It's like, <laughs> we don't hold each other to the same standards because we're different. Right. So when Christians, again, out of a good heart, try to say we're all children of God and we try to be nice to people, um, I, you know, I think we're doing, we're doing more harm than good because you're telling people they're children of God but you're not going to hold them accountable because they're not actually a child of God. You know, it just, it gets all tangled up. And so our language is important, yes. which is why we talk about these things. Our, our language is important. Yes. It's important to understand, you know, the consequences of what we believe and what we say. Yes. And, and, and that's, and that's a key point because, and, and this speaks to the entitled nature and attitude we have seemed to have arrived at in America today. We believe that we're entitled to something because, well, maybe you never broke the law, right? Maybe you never sped. Maybe you never smoked uh, illegal substances. Maybe you, you never drank when you were young, or maybe you've never been drunk, or maybe <laughs> you, you never disobeyed your parents. <laughs> uh, maybe <laughs> maybe you think that you have been living a good life and being a good person, and you got straight A's in school, and you never got in trouble in school, and you, and you did all the things, and you were nice to people, and so you feel entitled to this reward. Well, the problem with it all is, is that eternal life and salvation in Christ Jesus is not a reward. The reward comes after. The reward is eternal life. However, that, 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 that what Jesus offers in salvation is not a reward. It's a choice right? That comes from believing in him and what he has done and accepting that and then loving God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. That means all your body. This is why I believe baptism is such an essential part of the salvific process because if we're not giving our whole body into him through baptism, our physical self, dying to the physical self, being resurrected, as Romans talks about in Romans 6, if we, if we die with him, then we will be resurrected with him, and this through baptism. Uh, inside of this, there's some important things that happen to giving our full selves over to him. That is a choice made so that when we are saved, we are saved by grace through the faith of Christ Jesus, 
right? It's Christ's faith that put him upon the cross. It's Christ's faith that allowed him to live a perfect life, to come down here to do things God called. Our faith isn't, it isn't our faith that saves us. It's the faith of Christ Jesus and wholly his faith and action upon the cross. And this is not by my works. Uh, again, baptism not being a, a work, but it's being a, uh, it, it's giving of yourself wholly to God. You know, it's, it's a surrender. It's not a work. It's a surrendering wholly unto God. Notice that when you're baptized, you don't baptize yourself. Mm -hmm. Somebody baptizes you. Therefore, you are not performing a work. Something is being happening to you as you surrender yourself to death, uh, the death of, of the flesh, and coming to life in the, in the spirit uh, in Christ Jesus. And therefore, uh, uh, where I'm going with this is basically it, it you cannot get the benefits. You're not entitled to the benefits if you haven't paid the cost, if you haven't accepted the membership. You don't get the benefits if you're not in the relationship, right? And and oftentimes we, that's what we want. We want the benefits of relationship. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of young people these days, but they don't want to be in the relationship. They don't want the responsibility that goes along with relationship. Again, it's one of those reasons why people think, you know, abortion should be illegal and it's out there and should be so accessible because I don't want the responsibility of the relationship. I just want the benefits of the relationship. Well, you can't get the benefits of the relationship with Jesus Christ, which means being a child of God. You don't get the benefits without first accepting the responsibility of relationship and you can always open that door absolutely you know um do you want to flip over to ephesians 2 i can flip over to ephesians 2 ephesians 2 verse 1 and 2 this is paul writing to the church in ephesus so the church he's writing to christians as for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in you who are dis the in those who are disobedient as for you you were dead in your you were dead in your transgressions and sins as christians you know we're different now but we all start in the same place but the same place we start is not children of god it's enemies of god brandon and i both were an enemy of god at one point in our life but we don't have to stay there that door is always open for us to walk through. Always. And it's always open for you to walk through. So, you know, don't feel beaten down that we're saying you're an enemy of God. Don't feel beaten down that we're saying you're not a child of God. Because if you want to be, you can be. That's right. But as of now, you know, if you have not put your faith in Christ Jesus, you're not. And that's just the truth. Well, and and people need to understand that because I wouldn't be we wouldn't be harping on this so hard if there wasn't such a message of deceit mm -hmm. out there. Remember, we go back to the original what it says: "Do not be deceived." All right? Not everyone is a child of God. Not everyone gets the benefits of salvation. Only those who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's the that's the test. That's the testament that we accept Jesus Christ, we accept what he did upon the cross, we say he is the Lord of my life, we believe that he came to the earth, we believe that he lived a sinless life, we believe he died on a cross, we believe he was resurrected, we believe he ascended and sits at the right hand of God. If you don't know these things, if you don't know who he is, please reach out to somebody. Leave a message in the podcast. I'll, I'll give you some scripture to go read, you know, for, uh, for you to get... Um, Reach out to a local congregation if you're watching this online and, and you're not near uh, Rossville, Kansas. You know, reach out to to the people around you uh, who you know that know God. Walk into your uh, local Christian church or 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 Baptist church or 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 a congregation out there that will teach you what the truth of God is, so that you can know Him, so that you can come into relationship with Him, and do it and do it soon because you don't know. You just never know. Have urgency because not everybody is a child of God. I'm sorry. And we appreciate you guys joining us for our podcast today. Uh, I thought it was a good podcast. I thought it was good stuff. It is, it's always good stuff. Well, because it's Bible stuff, uh, right? Absolutely. Because we're learning about who God is, mm -hmm. right? The truth of God through what? Through the light 
of the scripture. There you go. Or the, the word. word. Very good. <laughs> Very good, because that's what it's all about, guys. And and this way, we don't have to be uh, ambiguous. And, and you don't have to follow somebody's feelings. And you don't always have to listen to somebody. You can go to the word and you can see it clear for yourself. So, not a child of God? Go be one. Right? Accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You are a child of God? Stay in the truth. Cling tight to his, 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 his word. Do not be deceived. Do not be taken away from what is truth. But hold tight to Christ Jesus and his truth. And we'll see you again next week, which is Halloween. Right? Oh, yeah, it will be. <laughs> right? Very good. So it'll be in Halloween next Thursday. And it'll also be that. Reformation Day. It, yeah, yeah, it is Reformation <laughs> Day. Very good, right? Yeah. So uh, who knows? We might be in costumes. We might not. Who knows? Yeah, it's it's podcast. You can never tell. Um, guys, stay strong. Stay in the faith. Give glory to God. If you don't know Jesus, go get to know him today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pastor B, your host. And I'm Ariel. Continue to seek truth, and we will see you next week while we help you seek that truth. That's right. God bless.